Hello everyone, this is Tradewind, and welcome to a Let's Play Battletech video. In this video, I'm going to be pretty much setting up uh, my campaign, uh, going through the different cutscenes in the beginning. Uh, so if you've seen this, feel free to just skip the video entirely. But if you, if you want to get a little bit of the lore and the story behind this game, feel free to stick around. All right. So we will go and we will play a new campaign. Now I have played uh, a campaign already for a couple hours. I wanted to make sure I knew the controls, make sure I knew all the basics. Uh, I don't know everything about this game. There's probably going to be plenty that I'm missing. So if you guys want to comment and let me know some tips and tricks, I'd appreciate it. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that I wouldn't be fumbling through this first few f few videos learning to play the game. So I, I got the basics down and now I'm ready to start my Let's Play For Real campaign. I am Kamea of House of Rano, High Lady of the Oregon Reach. Protector of Koromadir, and the Sword of Restoration. But I am not a hero, no matter what the stories say. A hero would have sacrificed more, compromised less. A hero would have done better. You know this, of course. You were there. My father used to tell me stories about the ancient times, about the Star League, a golden age of prosperity, upheld by the great mech warriors of old, guardians of the innocent, protectors of the peace. I always dreamed of following in their footsteps. I was too young to see the truth of things. After all, it wasn't heroism or a noble cause that won me the throne it was hiring a mercenary skilled enough perhaps ruthless enough to carry the day hiring you i still don't know if you fought for honor or for the thrill of it for belief in my cause or just in my money but whether it was your noble heart or mercenary mind your actions gave us hope. That makes you a hero in the eyes of history. Whether you believe it, that's up to you. Welcome to the Oregon Reach. The Oregon Reach is a small kingdom in the Rimworld periphery, a region of space that lies at the outskirts of the more densely colonized Inner Sphere. It is home to the Oregon Coalition, a federation organized around a parliamentary mo monarchy and ruled by the Arano family. For three generations, under the rule of House Arano, the Oregon Coalition has remained a relatively peaceful corner of their periphery. It is here your story begins. Decades ago, your family came to the Reach from... Alright, so these options are just setting up your backstory. If it had any modifiers and if it really mattered, uh, I assume there would be something down in this region saying like plus or minus to gunnery or tactics or piloting or guts or something like that. So I don't know... I'm... I would guess that none of this matters, so I'm just going to pick the Rimworld Periphery. You are of noble birth. Though immigrants to the Oregon Reach, your family soon establish a comfortable presence in a small backwater system on the edge of Oregon space. By the time you were born, your family had become the de facto ruling nobility of the system's only inhabited planet. You were the oldest child, heir to the family's titles and ancestral battle mech, an old Blackjack BJ-1. 
This is where you met Raju Mastiff Montgomery, a veteran of the Succession Wars, whom your parents hired on for a season to train you as a mech warrior. Raju was a strict but capable teacher, and you quickly became a skilled pilot under his tutelage. It was an uneventful life. Until the day after your 16th birthday, when... So this is actually building your characters now. So each one of these, like exiled, struck out on your own, bankrupt, accident, betrayed, uh, they have modifiers to how your pilot acts. And basically, gunnery is exactly what you think it is. It's shooting. Tactics is... From the little bit I understood about it, it's something like a light mech would want. A light mech pilot. So... Those skills are like sensor lock and things like that. So you, you're you a spotter for the other mechs, kind of. From what I understand. Uh, piloting is going to help with your melee attacks. It'll help keep your mech from falling down when it gets hit by ballistics, things like that. And Guts is, if you've played an RPG for before, it's, uh, it's effectively your hit points, kind of. <laughs> uh, it also does do some other things within the game, uh, but so far, it's just hit points that matter because I haven't really leveled up a character through any of the the guts traits. All right, so not exactly. Uh, I'll probably probably do gunnery and guts because my first playthrough, I did gunnery and tactics because I wasn't really sure what any of this did, and now that I know like the basics. Uh, doesn't seem like gunnery and tactics go together. Maybe it does at higher levels, I'm not sure. But my guy kept on getting knocked out and his mech kept going down because he didn't have the hit points. So we're going with gunnery and guts. Out on your own, you fell into the life of A. So now it's letting you choose your profession. So I got one gunnery, one guts. I would like another gunnery. Hitting your target is pretty key. So, Oregon Coalition Soldier or Solaris Gladiator. Gladiator sounds cool. Not even going to read this. You can pause it here if you want. Whatever. <laughs> Until years later, you cross paths with Raju Mastiff Montgomery once again. You were a low-level champion, down on your luck, and one bad fight away from the gutter until Raju heard about you. He trekked all the way to Solaris to offer you passage back to the Oregon Reach and a job in the House Arana Royal Guard. Oh, what a nice guy. So it is that you find yourself reunited with your old mentor, preparing your ancestral blackjack for guard duty on the coronation day of Lady Kamea Arano. Ooh. Now I can, uh, not Koopa Devi, that, that'll work. And, ooh, that guy looks like a gladiator. His face is all messed up. Ooh, this guy's got like face tattoos like a Maori. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that guy's got a heart face tattoo. This guy just screams Maori warrior to me, but I want him clean shaven. That gives him a <laughs> the the beard gives him a little bit of a, a dad vibe, and I don't really want that. Ooh, I can get different tattoos. Yeah, let's give him this scar. All right. Good enough. Generally in games where they have you customize characters, I don't like to build one from scratch. I uh, find it very cumbersome, regardless of how friendly the interface is. Uh, and I just don't have that kind of visually creative mind. So I like to go off of 
some of the presets or a randomized one and then tweak it here and there just like I did. And as you can see, I don't do a whole lot of tweaks. Generally, you can find one that's pretty close to something I like, so I just, whatever, anything's good. Alright, so this is your character's background. Now that uh, we finished building it, gives you a little synopsis of what you chose and it allows you to start over so if you pick something on accident you don't have to like just exit the game and restart the game you can just hit this screen start over and choose what you want but we're going to confirm and onward the high lord tamati arano the second is dead the Oregon Reach is left at an uncertain crossroads, once prosperous. Well, I guess we're not reading that. <laughs> yeah, so um, you guys can pause the video, rewind, do whatever you need to, uh, so you can catch up on this backstory. It's basically Lady Arano's father died and they're having a coronation and you're part of the Royal Guard on Coronation Day with your old mentor Raju Mastiff Montgomery. And as you can tell uh, from the first introduction where Lady Arano actually spoke, uh, she talked about you helping reclaim her throne so you already know things are not gonna go as planned but we'll see what happens this will be your first mission and the game didn't have a tutorial that I saw uh, but it's kind of integrated within the storyline so there is and is not a tutorial alright so let you WASD to move the camera around. Use the right mouse button Q and E to rotate. Okay, Tradewind. I had the Espinosa refit yards rush the repairs on your blackjack. Looks like it's all in one piece. But we should run some di diagnostics on it just to be sure. Standard field tests, you know the drill. So I love when games have tutorials, it makes it the learning experience much better. But Battletech really went the extra step and integrated the tutorial into the game in such a way that it makes sense that you are actually doing the tutorial. Like you, your Mac just underwent repairs, and now we're in the field testing it. So he's going to let me know what I need to do to do the tests, and it's going to teach me how to play the game at the same time. This is brilliant game developing. I, I love it when they go the extra mile and do stuff like this. Don't get me wrong, as long as a game has a tutorial I'm happy. I, I hate it when games don't. <laughs> but it really shows how much effort and care they put into a game when they think about something as simple as how the tutorial interfaces with the game. It I love it. More importantly though, I want to tell you more about the job I brought you out here to do. Now do me a favor and get that battle mech moving. Let's see if there are any kinks in the actuators. Right, click on our mech warrior's portrait. Press tab to cycle between available units. So I don't have any other available units. That would be these spots right here. Just me. I'll come right out and say it. So you click on your blackjack and then you can click on one of these little dots. As you can see from this outline, they're kind of set up in a hex hex grid movement. So, right here. And then you can rotate your facing. So, these red lines show that I have, if I move here, I haven't confirmed it yet, but if I move here, I have direct line of sight, unobstructed, to this target and this target. And I don't know what this target is, it's still not fully spotted, but this one is a test dummy. So we'll move here. I'll just stand up on this ridge. And as I move, now this one is in view as well. 
I brought here, you here because there's something wrong in the capital. It's been too quiet since High Lord Tamati's funeral, and I'm worried about Lady Kamea's safety during her coronation procession. Alright, so... Anyway, looks like your actuators check out. Let's conduct a weapons test. Target one of those burnt out old urban mechs and open fire. Alright, so I can tab to cycle between the targets. And here I can turn off or on all of my weapons. So it gives my chance to hit right here. These guys aren't moving, they're pretty close, so 95%. Gives me all my damage readouts. This is my melee attack. It would deal 40 damage if I was in range. And my death from above damage would be 110. All right. And then over here is your heat, your heat bar, heat meter, whatever they want to call it. And it's saying that I could fire all six of my weapons and I would generate this much heat. Uh, you generally don't want to go too much past this line or you don't want to go for an extended period of time. That's very bad. And this bar right here is your mech stability. Uh, basically, if you get to f a full five, your mech falls down, and if your mech falls down, your pilot gets injured. Three injuries, and he's knocked out. Could possibly die. I'm, I'm probably they've probably made the game to where the main character can't die, but you never know. Uh, I've definitely in my other playthrough, I did have a random other pilot die, so it can happen. All right, so. We'll just do a little shooty shoot and structure expose. Get all these uh, readouts that say like right arm, right leg, right torso. That's what the R T R L R A C T is center torso. So it's just telling you what you hit, what you did to the mech after you hit it. All right, good shot. Your guns are in working order at least. So now we got tanks. Uh, at least I think that's a tank. A little far. <laughs> I've been training Lady Arano since she was 14 years old. She can be naive at times and proud, but I have no doubt that she'll be just. She'll be a just and effective ruler. It's on us to see her safely to Cordia City. I'll rest easier once she's in the capital with her cousin Victoria by her side. Lady Victoria, well, she's only been training under me for a single season, but she's already shaped herself into one of the strongest mech warriors I've ever seen. Reminds me a lot of you, truth be told. Anyway, we should run a check on your targeting computer. You see that drone over there? The one moving through the tree line? Put some hurt on it for me. And then when it turns, take it out with a rear angle shot. After it's down, we'll keep moving. All right, so it basically his instructions tell you that uh, hitting this from different angles is going to yield different results. So you can see the structure one out of one, armor seven out of seven. The the back of this particular tank is very weak. The front structure is twenty two, armor is ninety, so it's very strong. Uh, and then not guaranteed you're going to hit just this front because you could hit this side, you could hit this side, you could hit the turret, all kinds of stuff. But things are very, very vulnerable in this game in the back. So we're going to do our first. We'll be fine on heat, so we'll just fire everything again. And you can see it's it, it did some damage, but I mean, I'm this gigantic battle mech and that's a little tank and I barely scratched it so so now we will target this dummy again and as you can see did 40 ish damage to the front armor and 35 ish to the turret not a whole lot of uh, good things happening when you shoot heavily armored targets from the front a lot. Alright, so we're gonna shoot everything again and you'll see the results of shooting like immediately destroyed in one hit, bam. <laughs> so in the tutorial they're also showing you 
some basic tactics as well. Nice shot. Now, I don't know how familiar you are, you are with Oregon politics, but the Reach was badly shaken with High Lord Tamati's death. It needs a smooth transfer of power, and Kamea belongs on the Cormorant throne. Go ahead and fire up your jump jets, kid. I want to see you descend the cliff face. Aim for that patch of ground over there near the edge of the lake. Okay. Alright, so now we can... If you've got a little carrot over a pilot, that means it is uh, on them to take a turn next. Or give them the possibility of taking a turn. So we'll do our little jump jet thing, and generally you can... Uh, face any direction after you jump. I think that's going to be my next... It could be that guy, but we'll, we'll assume it's this guy. Alright, and jump jets, as you can see, generate a ton of heat as well. The jump jets generally don't make that much heat in uh, this kind of biome. Uh, but this is for tutorial purposes, just letting you know that, hey, jump jets generate heat. So I'm going to, he told me to head in the water so I can cool off. All right, warning, plasma leak detected, jump jet malfunction, jump jet systems damaged, system inoperable until repaired. All right, so my jump jets are destroyed. Oh, for the love of all the gods, this is what I get for insisting on a rush job. Not that I had much of a choice. The Espinosa refit yards were backlogged like you wouldn't believe. It looked like they were trying to process every single Royal Guard mech in time for the coronation. There isn't any time to get your jump, your jump jets replaced, so we're going to have to make do without them. Go ahead and take that mech down with a melee attack. I want to be sure nothing else is going to break down on your blackjack before we take it out on the Cormorant Road. Alright, so, and to do, to execute a melee attack, you just, from your move interface, you don't even, like, you would move here and then be able to shoot generally, but if you just click straight on the guy, it'll highlight down here in the corner, it'll highlight melee attack, so bam, 95%. And if it says fire, it's not going to do a melee attack. You want it to say attack. So I'll just go over here. Bam. Knock that dude out. All right. Good hit. At least that's solid. All right. One last test. I want you to take your blackjack up to a sprint and evade my attack. Push that engine, kid. If something goes wrong today, I uh. want to know that you're making So... With uh, evasion chevrons, you get these little chevrons right here that are an indicator of how hard your mech is to hit by enemies. And you could see, like if I sprint to here, I'll get no evasion chevrons. I haven't moved enough. Here is one, here's two, here's three. And you can go all the way up to four, like if I go over here. But I'm, I'm supposed to go here. And it's very useful in battle when, especially when you get a light mech, because they don't carry a lot of armor, their armor is speed, kind of. Uh, so, just sprint over here, and I rotated my facing, my facing cone, I guess it is, uh, so that if this guy had hit me, it would hit me on the front. Don't want to take back damage. We We went through that with the the tank earlier. Congratulations, Tradewind. Your blackjacks as combat ready as it can be, given the circumstances. For what it's worth, I hope my suspicions turn out to be unfounded, and we end the day having a good laugh about what a paranoid old man I've become. But if not, then I'll know you'll be ready. All right, it's time to move out. Lady Arano is waiting for us at the mech bay. All right, so uh, I think I'm going to end the video here, guys. Just doing the character setup and the beginning tutorial. There's still a little bit more of the tutorial, and then uh, that tutorial is kind of melded into the actual mission and the storyline. So 
you want to see some more, join me next time. Uh, until then, fair winds and following seas.